What's good with it, y'all? We back with another one, baby. Let's talk about my Lakers. Trade deadline approaching. Let's get into it. What's good with it, y'all? What's good with it, man? We back with another one. Welcome back to A1 Hoop Zone. Y'all already know what to do, man. Before we get into this video, make sure y'all hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, topic of discussion today is my is my my Lakers, man. Uh, trade deadline is approaching. Um, you know, slowly but surely, it's getting there, and we know things gonna ramp up across the league as the, as that trade deadline approaches. But uh, in this case and situation, my Lakers have been a team that's been you know seesawing up and down. Right now, we're 21 and 22. Just got, you know, <laughs> got slapped out by the Nets. Uh, was favorite to win that game, ended up losing that. Um, again, I, I actually called that saying that, you know, that that was going to happen if, if they didn't play a certain kind of way. And, you know, it is what it is. It, it's a situation that's almost becoming predictable at this point. Um, but needless to say, man, um, we, we're here to discuss these trades. So, we all know right now Lakers have been in the headlines as far as pursuing either DeMar DeRoz or pursuing a Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, or Alex Caruso. Obviously not all three at once, hoping to land one at best case scenario, two of them, but that ain't going to happen. Um, you know, and, and, and more recent news, uh, the topic of discussion has has been so more, more so on uh, DeJounte Murray, you know what I mean, from the Atlanta Hawks. So, a lot of people, you know, there's rumors that came out. Lakers offered up, um, you know, D'Angelo Russell and and Scottie Pippen, <laughs> Scottie Pippen Jr., things of that nature, man. And, and the Hawks was like, hell no. <laughs> they, you know, they, I think they threw in a pick as well with it. You know, and again, these are just rumors that go along with it, man. But they, they were like, hell no. You know what I mean? They, they didn't have no interest in that. They, they wanted no parts of that. You know what I mean? Um, but for, it's for the most part, everybody on this roster right here that you see, except for these two that that circle, everybody is, is up for grabs. They up for go. Uh, you know what I mean? They, they, they own the chopping block, however you want to phrase it and put it. Everybody there is, is definitely able to, to be traded. Um, now, but re in, in reality though, um, I would say that the major keepers for this team, obviously is LeBron, obviously is AD. And then outside of that, it's like people that I wouldn't mind seeing the Lakers keep, you know, a Vanderbilt and a Roy Hachimaro. You know, say, you know, why, why, why them two? You know, like a lot of people might say. Um, Vanderbilt, three, he is a high-energy defensive and, and, and high-output guy. You need one of those type of guys on your team. You need one of those guys. He can guard one through four. You know what I mean? Just based off the energy, the athleticism, the length, speed, and, and, his, and everything, he can guard one through four. Now, Rory. He can do the exact same as Vanderbilt, except for he can give you buckets as well. That's that's the flip side. He can he can definitely give it to you on both ends of the court. Now he can't guard one through five, one through four. He can definitely guard two through four. I can say that much. But he could definitely give you offensive buckets as well. That's why I was like, okay, that's definitely two people you'll want to keep with them. Now, <clears throat> would I let go of D'Angelo Russell? Yeah. Would I let go of Austin Reeves? Yes. But the thing is, it has to be for the right piece, the right. The right ones. And I think uh, right now, if you look across the league, anytime when any type of discussions are, are opened up with the Lakers, the number one person they go after is this guy. This is who they're saying they have an interest in. This is who they, they want to build uh, a, a trade proposition around, a negotiation around. You know what I mean? Because they, they see that, it, you know, at 25 years old, he's averaging what, 15 points, four boards, five assists, and he's shooting dang near 50% from the floor. Um, Definitely, uh, I would say team friendly contract that he has as well. So that you know they, they don't have to look at it that much from being being having to pay a whole lot for him and things of that nature. He's been in the league now. What he got drafted in twenty twenty one. So it, it, he's approaching that year where a lot of people either they make that leap if they're gonna do be something or they kind of you know form their identity. If they are who they're gonna be. You know, in year four, year five. You know what I mean. Um, so in that case, man, like a lot of teams are asking around him. Uh, but in this particular one, I wanted to kind of touch on more so is it, it, more than anything is, you know, if if the Lakers were to 
offer up Austin Reeves and D'Angelo Russell to, to the Hawks, I think the Hawks would take it. My personal opinion of it. Why? D'Angelo Russell, 27 years old, same age as DeJounte Murray, uh, averages pretty much 16 points a game, roughly almost three boards and six assists, and shoots 47% from the floor as well. You know what I mean? And, and again, they're the same age, definitely a different player that'll fit in with. He'll fit in differently with um, with Trey Young. He's not a player that needs to start. You know, D'Angelo Russell has been a starter, come off the bench, been a starter again to come off the bench. So it's been, you know, when he's hot, he, they can definitely throw him in a starting role. When he's struggling, they'll throw him on the bench. Uh, we all know on the defensive side of things is kind of where he his game lacks. Outside of that, it's like he can do, you know, on defensive, and he's definitely gifted. But defensively, I mean, hell, he's down there, uh, damn near a goddamn cone, <laughs> a drill cone out there. Um, so I think a lot of it, man, it, it, it's more so that the in the effect of, you know, like they, they got to I, – I, if I was a Lakers, I would offer that package up to the Hawks because I feel like DeJounte Murray – he, 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 like I said, 27, he averages over 20 a game, five boards, five assists, and shoots the, the, around the exact same percentage as D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves. Now, the different dynamic that he gives, he gives you everything both of them can do on both ends of the court and probably does does it better than both of them. He's definitely a better scorer than both. Defensively, he's definitely more gifted defensively because he's around the same size and much more athletic than both. And, and he he he's a well groomed vet in the game as well. He 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 was you know he put, obviously if you didn't know he played for the San Antonio Spurs under Coach Pop, groomed uh, you know one of the leaders of or the leader of that team at one point in time. He got traded to the Hawks, and then you know it's just been a weird situation again with him and Trey, and Trey Young. You know two kind of ball dominant type guards. It just haven't it panned out how, how the Hawks faithful would hope it would be. You know what I mean? So in reality, for me, if if I was them, I would make that trade. The Hawks are getting back a player, to, uh, two players that have no issue with coming off the bench, that don't need the ball like that. They they can both catch and shoot or be playmakers and things of that nature. So I think they will both play well off the ball with Trey Young. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like Murray would be a, a better fit also because, like I said, outside of the, the tangibles I just gave you, he also is a point, like a scoring kind of a scoring point guard that that has no issue with picking up on a defensive end as well. That's something that they are definitely missing. I mean, they were hoping Gabe Vincent was going to be able to fill some kind of void, um, you know, coming over. But, hell, hey, <laughs> they haven't seen seen the sighting of him since then in the beginning or the preseason or beginning of the season. So I'm like, the hell did they even waste the time drafting for? I, I ain't going to – it ain't no knock on him. It ain't his fault, you know, he got hurt or things of that nature and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's like – you know, we we want to compete for a championship. We're not here to just waste prime years of AD or or the last years of LeBron. You know what I mean? And and you know, knock on wood, not saying like that, but you know, Father Time is undefeated for a reason. You know what I mean? So it's like you you looking at players that's just out here filling up roster space and salary caps, and, and when that could be a move, a piece being moved to to bring in another piece that could help us compete for a championship. I think DeJounte Murray would be the perfect fit for this team from a, from a point guard perspective. Like I said, a scoring point guard can definitely play. Um, he can play off the ball as well, but also more so he can play make too. So it's like if you need him to get a bucket, you get a bucket. If you need him to D up, he'll D up. If you need him to play off the ball, he can play off the ball. We all know that LeBron is best, you know, when he has the ball in his hand. But what we did see is when LeBron played with Kyrie and he was able to play off the ball, he was phenomenal playing off the ball as well. You know what I mean? We all know LeBron can move without the ball. We all know he sees the play ahead of time. So he, if he gets the ball, you know, catch and dish, all of, all of the above, he can do those things. That's not an issue. The issue is you when you when D'Angelo Russell's out there, the teams target him. Teams look to target him on, on the end knowing that, you know, he lacks defense. They, they look at those things. That's no knock against him. It's just the truth. Austin Reeves is like, you know, it's it's – it is what it is when they come to him. He he's still in a, in a phase where it's like he's not gonna make decisions or plays or certain do certain things because he doesn't feel he has that cachet to make that decision. Murray, on the other hand, seasoned vet like that, he 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 isn't gonna be scared of the fact of, of turning down a, a certain things and, and and all that. Like you know what I mean? He he isn't gonna be scared of that because he has self belief and he also is, is tenured enough and as long as he's been in this league too, so that won't be a concern. But I would love, I'd love to see him in that purple and gold, and see how they would be able to, to to work this thing out and get it played, played to 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 match out. But for like I said, man, it's just one of those things where the the Lakers got to be aggressive in this trade perception of understanding. 
okay, if you, if you get a DeJounte Murray and you still have a, a, a AD that's still in his either prime or latter, latter half prime or however you want to look at it in, in his years, you know, that's still something that you can still work with. A uh, one-two punch one with those two and you still can can go after uh, Zach Levine, you know, in the future or go after, you know, some other some other high profile players that you can go after as well. So it's just one of those things. And I think the Lakers are kind of holding on to picks and things of that nature thinking like, OK, well, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. It's like, OK, do you want to win chips now or do you want to sit here and, and, and waste prime years? You know what I mean? That's something they got. That's something they got. They got to look at. Definitely got to look at that. But like I said, everybody, everybody on that roster is, is up for sale. Everybody on that on that roster is movable except for two people, maybe three. If you can if you can swing somebody in, you don't have to get rid of them. Don't do it. But for the most part, I'm I'm opening a book and I'm saying, let, OK, let's make something work. If you want to compete for a championship, you're going to have to do it because it's up and down. Seesaw, the personalities, the the injury littered bench and, and role players and stuff, man, we, we got to put a better product out here. You know what I mean? But like I said, man, that's all I got for. You. I just wanted to get in and cook on this a little bit in regards to, to the trade, this, this trade, trade rumors or, or potential trades they should be doing, man. And I think they should pull the trigger on it, but y'all yeah, keep an eye out, man. I'm going to be dropping some more videos on other teams as well to, to give my point and perspective on, on trades that could, help, you know, help a team, you know, take that next step and things of that nature, man. But that's all I got for you. I appreciate you coming through. Make sure you hit that like button, sub to the channel if you're new, leave a comment in the comment section, and I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of y'all. And with that said, man, I'll catch you on another one.